Okay, if you have your uh, paper this morning, turn with me if you would. And I've entitled my message this morning, The Four Types of People Here, On Site. This, and I'm going to let you categorize yourself as we go through these scriptures. Because you're going to fit in one of the four. Four types of people that hear the gospel and their response to the gospel and their life following. But our Lord gave us the parable, the first parable that he ever gave. He had spoken to them right up front the truth until this point. But the scripture says that because that they rejected the truth that teaches us this, that he turned from them and he started speaking unto them in parables. And this was the first parable that he gave. In uh, Mark chapter 4, we're going to read those uh, verses there and then we'll hold up when we get down to Matthew. Verse 3. Hearken, behold, there went out a sower, or a planter to sow or to plant. And it came to pass as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came, and they devoured it up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up, and they choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and did yield fruit that sprang up and increased, and brought forth some thirty, some sixty, and some in hundred. Jesus said unto them, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? The sower soweth the word. And these are they by the which the wayside where the word is sown, and when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately they receive it with gladness, and they have no root in themselves. And they so endure for a time Afterwards, when affliction or persecution arises for the world's sake, or the word's sake, immediately they are offended. And these are they which are sown by, among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. And finally... Verse 20, these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. Once again, this is our Lord's first parable. The Lord said, he that hath ears let him hear or understand what the scripture saith. The Lord spoke to them on terms that they should or could understand. And he gave this parable first as one would farm or sow. And then he gave the parable of the fishermen. And then he gave the parable of the workers in the vineyard and the carpenter and so on. 
But he spoke to people where he wanted them to understand. And he's speaking here in the parable we just read that the sower went forth to sow. He went forth with the gospel. And the first place that he sowed the seed, it says the seed fell by the wayside. It was not received. Hearing, but not understanding. In Matthew, if you will, look at further down on your page, of Matthew 13, verse 19. When anyone, anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and they catch it away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receiveth seed by the wayside. And we asked the question, the Lord went to the Jews first of all. The Jews heard, but they did not, under, not understand. If you would, look at John chapter 5, verse 39. Jesus said to those Jews, Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. And you'll not come to me that you might have life. They didn't understand. Why? Because they were blinded in their religion. And folk, there's a vast difference between religion and Christianity. But it seems that their consciences were seared as with a hot iron, is the way the Bible puts it. A conscience seared as with a hot iron. They uh, were not convicted because they were not capable of it. There's a place in the scripture in Romans it refers to the reprobate. And folk, when you reach that stage, it's a bad stage. But that's a person that it's impossible, it seems, for them to be saved. But these Jews were blinded in their sins. If you would look down at uh, Ecclesiastes 8, verse 10. Solomon said, And so I saw the wicked buried, who had come and gone from the place of the holy. And they were forgotten in the city, where they had so done. This is also vanity. Some people hear the word. They never understand it. It never sinks in. And they don't bother and they wind up in hell because they never receive the word. They believed not. So the first seed is people that reject the gospel or they don't understand it. And by and by they forget what they even heard. But it's a picture of those that are lost without hope. Of those that go on into the place that we call hell. But then let's look at the second seed. The seed that falls on stony ground, verse 16 and 17. Look back up at your uh, middle of your page. Verse 16 and 17. And these are they that likewise which are sown on the stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately they receive the word with gladness. They're saved. But they have no root in themselves. So endure for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution arises, for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. Where'd they go? Brother Enrique in Sunday school this morning made mention of a church member that did go to church here 
He got offended over our insurance. <laughs> Discussion with others about the church insurance. So by and by, he just dropped by the wayside. You know what happened to someone like that? They refused to be grounded in the Word. It's like falling on stony ground. Years ago, I knocked on a fellow's door and I was witnessing to him about the Lord and, and about his need of uh, the Lord and being in church. And his response to me was, well, that was a preacher that did so-and-so. Well, preachers going to have to answer to God just like <laughs> the rest of us. You can't get around it. But when you stand before God, you can't say, well, a deacon up here, Brother Bobby, did so-and-so. Brother Bobby's going to have to stand on his own before the Lord. You might get offended Folks, don't wear your feelings on your shoulders. Okay? But some people do. They get offended at the least. They go on. We count on our roll some 250 members. And we say, well, where in the world are they? They fit right here. They were offended. Or maybe in the next set we're going to go to. But notice, they received the word. They came up with joy. They're saved. But they have no root. A tree that grows up must first grow down, root itself. They finally give away to temptation. And folk, our young people are tempted like we wouldn't believe. And when you get to be 83 years old, you can say, <laughs> young people, as I speak to you, but they have no root. And by and by, they're gone. They become offended and they quit. And folk, it's so important. I don't know how it, and enforce it on your minds to ground yourself in the Word of God. There's no greater place on earth to study than in the Word. There's no substitute for it because it's the word of truth. I picked up the Houston Chronicle this morning like I used to do on Sunday morning. When it comes, it doesn't always come before I leave. It's a bunch of junk and politics and what have you. Uh, kind of a waste of time. But folk, when you study the word of God, you're learning about life and what, what your maker says about life. It's a manual of life. The people that get offended, they don't lose their salvation, do they? The Bible says that the Lord never lost the first one of his children. Never has. But sometimes his children get on the wrong track, don't they? These people we're reading about here were saved because they received the word. And folks, there's a multitude that fit in this category. They did not ground themselves in the word. And then the next one is similar. The seed that fell among thorns. Verse 18 and 19, if you would. Let's look again. And these are they which are sown 
among thorns. Such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things, entering in, they choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. These are they which are sown on good ground. We'll talk about that one last. But a lot of people fit the category. They hear the word, they receive it, they're saved. But they become choked because of the care of this world. Some of them go after material things, trying to make a living. And they forget God in church. Wasted life. No rewards. Doesn't mean they lose their salvation. The Bible says every man's work is going to be tried by fire. And some of his works are going to be burned and it said, and they shall suffer loss. That's by choice, isn't it? But some people, when they get saved, they never separate themselves from the old crowd. By and by they are choked by the things of the world. The Lord called us to be a separate people, did he not? And I'm talking about to the strictest sense. Right. We're new creatures, aren't we? Old things are supposed to be passed away and all things become new. Folks, you can't hang on to the world and be profitable for God. It's an either or deal. But I'll remind you what Jesus said. He said, you're for me or you're against me. But somewhere or another man has figured out a middle ground. Really not against the Lord, but he's not for him in his own mind. So you got the seed that fell among thorns, and then that the seed that fell on stony ground. Both of these are picture, pictures of people that get saved. We see them baptized. Sometimes we see them, not a, we baptized a lady a while back, Brother Enrique did, just recently. Haven't seen her since, have we? Right. What happened? Did she lose her salvation? No. It's impossible. But she's going to lose her reward if she doesn't get it right. So you got the seed that fell by the wayside, the seed that fell among thorns, and the seed that was on stony ground. No fruit. Linda and I go every Sunday up to Huntington. By the way, Pam lives just down the road from me up at Huntington. I just found out the day where she lived. But I planted some pecan trees up there about nine, ten years ago. You look and say, where are they at now? Well, you see some, it's climbed up pretty high, and some a little bit was still over here like this. But out of about 30 trees, there's about a remnant of maybe 10, 12, 15, if you count the little bitty ones. In nine years, there's one little tree out there that last year gave me about 17 pecans. 
and they all still land on the bar at the house in Huntington. Those 17 pecans. The biggest tree I got, you can look up there, right at the very top. And you see the hull of one pecan. But folk, I planted those trees. You might make a, little, make a little money on the side. You know, you get retired and what have you. You don't have much, a lot of income coming in. Well, I thought I might <laughs> raise a few pecans. Good idea. Takes a lot of work to go with it. The point I'm trying to make is I raised those for the fruit of the tree, which would have been pecans, right? The Bible says that the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. Amen. We're to bear black fruit, are we not? Naturally, to say disappointed in those trees, yeah. But probably the the sower had more to do with this one, not knowing what he was doing. But I wanted fruit, didn't I? Well, folks, the Lord wants fruit from you and myself. The seed that fell in the gospel, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the good news, the fact that God sent his son into the world to defeat death and die in our place. And we've heard that gospel and some have received it and yet bear no fruit. Kind of a misnomer. But then there's a seed that fell on good ground. The one that the planter's proud of. And the purpose of any tree is to bring forth fruit. Look at the last verse on your page. John 15 verse 8. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. Oh, we've got the group that goes out knocking on doors faithfully, soul winning. Trying to bear fruit for the Lord. And I, I lift up our, our Lord's precious name and praising Him that the Lord sent but then Ricky to light the fire again here. Our fire's about gone out as far as outreach. And we need to be all busy about the soul winning. If you can't go, you can pray for those that go and knock on doors. Telling someone at funeral home Friday night up at Conroe when we buried Brother Swilling this week, yesterday, longtime pastor friend of mine. But I was telling some about uh, our soul winning program here and how uh, excited that I am about it. One, one pastor friend of mine said, well, said, uh, a lot of people don't want you knocking on the door. <laughs> I said, a whole bunch of people, but there's some that want to hear the gospel. Amen. And they deserve to hear it. And we don't waste our time <laughs> with people that don't want to hear it. And then one, one fellow said to me, he said, well, those people, that, uh, they don't want you knocking on the doors in a lot of complexes. I said, that's true. And we've been asked to leave some. But, folk, if the Lord told you to go, and the devil said, don't go, give you every kind of excuse under the sun, What would you do? The Lord wants us to bear fruit, does he not? The scripture says, he that winneth the souls is wise. And folks, that scripture is still 
valid. It's our job to bring forth others that they might enjoy the kingdom of God as we do. Folk, I'm grateful that God given us that wherewithal to be a witness for him. To go and share the gospel. But we're dealing with eternal souls. Souls that crave some of them and need salvation. And others that lack a reprobate that don't care. In the four classes, I'm going to ask you, yourself, to put yourself in the proper category. I hope you're not in the category that the seed fell by the wayside. That means you reject the gospel. And then again, I hope you're not one where the seed has fallen on stony ground. Because the Lord wants you to bear fruit. Or being choked with the cares of this world. Or bearing fruit for the Lord. You get to pick the category that you fit in. Put you on the spot. I mean to. We need to actually put ourselves where we belong. 